All right, so today we're going to start a uh, wild game processing series here at Go Hunt, and I'm just going to run through kind of my process for cutting up wild game. So I've been actually processing my own wild game for my entire life. Actually, my parents' friend, Mike, shout out to Mike, he uh, got me into wild game processing. I just love the whole process, taking an animal and then working up that animal myself, doing whatever I want to do with said meat. Uh, it's just a process I really enjoy. So we're going to walk through kind of everything you need here in front of me to basically take meat from quarters. I have some deer quarters from a Colorado buck I killed this year. We'll process that, run through the grinder, and show you the process. So items you need. This is basically everything on the table for grinding meat. So I got obviously a big meat grinder here and we have different plates here and I will walk through different ones. So these are gonna be the grinding plates. I will first off say I have never used a super small grinding plate. Just don't do it. Don't, there's no real reason besides for just efficiency and time. So I will always run through first with the large grinder and then I go through a little medium sized grinder after grinding plate afterwards. Um, you gotta have a cutting board. Got to have some knives. I use a spoon for mixing a bunch of my seasonings. I always use a sage seasoning in with my wild game meat. Basically, some would, people would call this like a sausage type meat, but to me it works well for burgers, tacos, chili, anything you want to do with it. I always use sage seasoning, and then I also mix all my wild game meat with bacon ends and pieces. It just kind of makes that meat stick together a little more, adds a little bit of that fat content since wild game is so lean. Uh, meat bags. Grinding, I always prefer a one pound little meat bag tube here. Two pounds is kind of nice because you can get it done a lot quicker, but when you're gifting meat to your friends all the time, I like to have one pound. That way when you give them two little bags, it feels like a little bit more and I can save more meat for myself. Uh, meat lugs, you're gonna need probably at least two or three meat lugs. When you're taking the meat from the quarters into here, washing it and grinding it in there, meat lugs are really essential for just keeping everything organized and clean. That's the whole thing too, is just keeping everything clean while you're doing this in a controlled environment. Here we are in the kitchen. And then we have a little uh, tape dispenser here for running these bags through the tape dispenser when I have the meat in it. And we have a little stuffing tube. So as you can see, it's not a lot of complicated process here. You just need a few essentials and then you can get to the process of actually deboning the meat and then cleaning up some of the silver skin and things you don't want to grind and then start the grind process. So. We're going to dive into that right now, and i got my boy Trail down here who's going to uh, help me cut some meat up. All right, so the first process, part of the process here is I have a giant hindquarter of a mule deer. And what I'm basically going to be doing is just separating out the muscle groups and getting rid of stuff I'm not going to grind. Obviously, I have a trash can next to me. One thing I didn't mention, have a trash can near you for all the extra stuff. And then all the meat that I'm going to wash afterwards, I'm going to throw in the meat lug. So I'm just going to try to start separating out muscle groups and just working through this mule deer quarter as best I can. So I'm sure there's a million different ways to do this. This is just the way I've been doing it for a long time. So And this meat is still really cold. Wow. So again, I'm just trying to get rid of a bunch of the fat and silver skin type stuff as I go through here just to clean it up. It's really important to have a very sharp knife doing this so you can just like basically fillet it like a fish and so you're not taking a bunch of the uh, meat with it. Sometimes when I'm doing this too, I feel like it's easier to get rid of the, like I said, the silver skin, the fat while it's on the quarters. That way it's not just loose pieces of meat hanging around. It's just easier to work this way. So this first part's a little slow. And this is kind of the same process I would do if I was in the field deboning this deer. Too bad you can't do anything with that fat. A lot of fat in that deer.
So I'm still just removing a bunch of the fat and all the silver skin. Some of this stuff you can just leave and grind, but in my experience, the more you can take off, the less chance you have to actually clog in the grinder when you're actually making the burger. So I try to do my best I can right now to remove a bunch of the stuff that don't really need, doesn't really add any nutritional value, having silver skin and fat onto it. So I try to clean it up as best I can. Probably the slowest process throughout this whole thing is just cleaning it up. And once I get a bunch of stuff cleaned up, now I separate this big giant muscle group. I've got the big roast here. And it's just pretty easy just to follow the muscle all the way down to the bone. And then if you're going to keep the roast, you can just kind of peel it off the bone. So they've already removed a lot of the glands in the field. There's actually nothing you have to worry about that's bad if you hit it with a knife while you're cutting this process up. It's just separating out muscle groups and depending on what you want to do, if you want to save the roast, you can save it. Or if you're just going to grind it, you can just start cutting it up in smaller chunks right now. Kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you're trying to get some steaks out of the hindquarter, hindquarter is a great spot to get some steaks. Um, this big chunk right here, usually a good, it's a good portion of meat that you actually could make some steaks out of or some stew meat or that sort of thing. But I really like ground meat, so I'm pretty much going to grind this entire thing. Uh, Quarter-wise, I'll grind it. Obviously, I staked out the back straps and uh, tenderloins. And then you can kind of work around the bone joint here, trying to get in there, because there's actually a lot of meat right at the joint. So you kind of want, just want to work your knife around to make sure you get the most yield off the bone while you're doing this. Never done it. Just take your time. Go through it. You can always go back later and just like peel little pieces of meat off, meat off the bone just to you know, make sure you get everything off the animal that you can use. So type of knife I like to use is usually like a six to eight inch blade. I like the curved boning knife for this process. It allows me to like get in there and all the little, you know, ins and outs of the bone and just feels good in the hand. I don't like a giant knife. I don't like a straight blade. Obviously a straight blade will work, but I just kind of prefer a curved blade. For me, it just works really well, but use whatever works for you or whatever you're comfortable with. Or again, you're in the field doing this, you can use whatever sort of replaceable blade knife, fixed blade knife you have and everything will work. This is like a little longer blade, just makes this process a lot easier, a little bit quicker to go through. So you can see here, now I got the big roast area off the bone, and now I'm just gonna open this up. And then the inside, I'm going to start taking off some of these other little areas with some tendons and silver skin, fat, that sort of stuff, just to keep it clean and keep removing, you know, things I don't want to grind as I go through this. But this is a giant chunk of meat. And like I said, we got the big roast here. You can free that from this little area here. And pretty much, if you like crockpots, that is an amazing thing to toss in a crockpot with whatever sort of concoction you like. Even some of these little smaller pieces when I'm doing this too, I will keep that because that's just going to go right in the grinder. So I try to get as much meat from any sort of little fat that I can. Once you get some of these bigger chunks too, you'll see there's also different muscle groups overlaying on top of it. And you just keep separating them out. And then the meat just keeps kind of opening up into easier portions to deal with. This is one of those pieces I was saying earlier that a lot of times I will stake it, make stew out of it, or depending what my time is, I might just uh, grind it because, like I said, I love burger meat. All right, so now we have the lower part of the hindquarter. It's kind of a little tricky to take the meat off it, but you can see where the bone comes up through here. 
steel stick and knife, start going up through here and kind of just again flaying that off. And you can kind of cut around here in the bottom and then again work, it, work the back side up the bone all the way up to the joint. It's not that hard of a process, but it's just sometimes awkward when you got the bone hanging around here. That's why sometimes it's easier to do it in the field, but it's also a lot cleaner when you can do it on a table like this. And you will have a lot of tendons in here too you can get rid of, you can grind them. You kind of got a little pocket of meat up through here too. And you're just trying not to dull the blade as much as you can too. Obviously you can sharpen knives, but to make this process easier, once you start getting used to doing this, you will be able to do a whole deer without sharpening a knife, in my experience. When you're doing it, don't be afraid to grab hold of the meat, pull it away from the bone, because that just makes your strokes through the knife a lot easier. That way you don't have to really get in there. And it's going to also protect your blade from dulling on the bone. And again, any little small pieces you can see, just cut it off, grind meat. And that is pretty much a hind quarter all taken off. Same exact process I would do deboning in the field. Didn't take too long at all. If I wasn't talking going through this, it'd be a little bit easier. And then the front lower part of the leg, like I said, does have a lot of these tendons that roll through it. So I'm just basically separating out the tendons so I can easily just clean them up a little bit and then I have good chunks of meat in the middle. And again, this is something personally I like to take off, but you could just grind that if you wanted to. Just, I don't really feel the need to eat that part right now, so I'm going to cut it off and clean it up. And if you ever flayed fish, it's exactly like it. You're just pulling back the skin and just taking your knife and going upwards. So that way you're not taking big chunks out of the meat because you just want this, you know, the clean silver skin, no meat on it. That is a full hind quarter. I'm going to grab a front shoulder and do the same process on the front shoulder. Now we're on to front shoulder of the mule deer. Again, same process. You're just separating out muscle groups. Uh, again, I'm going to start with removing a bunch of the fat on top, and then I'll walk through. There's a bone that runs right down the middle here, and you can kind of just get in there and kind of flay that all the way out. And it's a pretty simple process, but we'll start with cleaning it up again. Maybe I'll touch on while I'm doing this. Um, obviously, I shot this buck in the fall, and it's been in my freezer since November. And a little tips here, so you don't do what, uh, sorry, Cody Boer. Uh, so Cody actually shot an elk last fall, had it in his game bags, threw the game bags into the freezer, on the bottom of the freezer. The game bags actually froze to the freezer to the point where we couldn't get his meat out of the freezer because it was stuck to the freezer. So I always like to do it when I get back. If I don't have time to, let's say, it was a bunch of deboned meat or whatever, or even quarters like this, I will take this quarter, make sure it's slightly cleaned off, and then I will double bag it in really heavy, can't remember what it is, like five mil trash bags, double bag it, get all the air out of it, and that way when it's in the freezer and freezes, it's not gonna freeze to the freezer or freeze to anything else inside the freezer. It just makes the process of pulling it out to thaw it. You can do one at a time that way instead of just having a big 100 pound clump of meat. It's gonna be hard to move around. So you wanna separate them out in manageable portions so that when you do this, it just makes it a lot easier. You can do, you know, fronts one week and then do a hindquarter the next week, that sort of thing. So just little bits of information to save you a bunch of time later on. Decently cleaned up, but I'm gonna start separating some of the muscle groups here just to make it a little easier. And we'll walk through how I do that. So basically there's this, uh, I don't know what you wanna call it, a big strip along the side here. I'm just going to cut and remove that, trying to cut the meat or into the other muscle group that is. And just remove all this. Basically goes right around the shoulder all the way to the front and we'll clean up that later. And then on the top, I'll just make a slit here. 
It's actually a bone that runs all the way down the front blade of the shoulder, kind of like this. And it's basically separated out on each side. Get as much meat as you can while you're doing that. And then, depending what if you're right handed or left handed, I always find one of these works better than the other side, just the way I work my knife. So I just go back down through here, work towards the bone so you can get as much meat as you can off. And you're kind of just flaying it off the shoulder blade. Yeah. So basically when you're doing this, just for a little bit of reference, how you can tell muscle groups is you can tell kind of when you just put your hand on it, if you can move it around and the top muscle is moving over top of the other muscle, you know you could probably cut right around through there and then separate out the muscle. I didn't do a very good job there. But now you can see right down through here, that part of the muscle is now being separated out. And it just makes it easy when you're cutting these out just to stay with the muscle groups. You don't have to, but just Makes it easier, makes you be able to see what you're doing. That way if you know like, oh, I really like that as a steak, you can start separating it out so you're not chopping up your steaks if, you, if this was a steak. But to me, this is grind meat. And just keep peeling it back. Again, found another muscle group right here, so I'm just going to take that and move it over. You can see how nice the different muscle groups just kind of peel away with little effort. And you'll see in this top part how I kind of filleted that away from the bone. Just work on each side and just kind of take your knife underneath it and just keep peeling away on both sides. And then just moved it right down to the bone and I'll go back through now and just clean that up. You actually do have a bunch of meat too on the back side of the shoulder. don't have to separate the shoulder blade from the lower leg, but sometimes it's easier to get around that knuckle and just grab some extra meat that might be hanging around the uh, joints here. Again, any piece of meat I can get off here, that's more meat in my freezer. Owe it to the animal to get as much off as I can. And again, that's what the Pull front shoulder blade looks like all cleaned up. And just like the process on the hind quarter, you just kind of work your way around the bone on the front lower portion of the leg. It has this little like pocket you can kind of just get in there with your knife and start peeling it away. 
It always helps just to move the, the bone around as you keep cutting it. That way you can get the right angle. Then again, you'll have some extra meat right at this little knuckle joint. And there you have it. Cleaned off front shoulder. I'm just going back through those pieces I just took off, getting rid of more of that silver skin. Kind of in a way, it's going to get rid of some of that gamey flavor and again, just make it so it doesn't clog up your grinder. Another trick too, I didn't talk about earlier, but if you have a lot of hot hair on your uh, quarters, you actually can take a torch and just lightly torch it. You don't want to burn that hot, that hair onto the meat but that's a good way to just clean it up really quickly. As you can see here, I don't have a lot of hair on it because I took really good care of it in the field and then before I put it in my freezer. But if you have a bunch of meat, high, or hair on your meat, just use a blowtorch. If you did have any areas that are like shot up from a gun or discolored, just cut around it. Don't have to throw away a whole chunk. If I had a big bullet hole right through here, I'd probably just cut around it, get rid of the whole stuff. It doesn't look you know, healthy to eat, just use caution and he'll be fine. All right, for a quick summary of the process, basically I took front shoulder, rear, hind quarter, kind of cleaned them up, got rid of some of the fat, some of the silver skin, and started separating up the muscle groups, took it off the bone, and then once I had it off the bone, start cleaning up even more, get more of that fat off, any of that stuff I just don't want to grind and put it all in the meat lug. So this is the front shoulder and our hind quarter all deboned. And then the next process I'm just gonna do is take all this meat and start cubing it up so it actually fits in the grinder really easy. And I'm actually not gonna wash it because I took care when I got it off the mountain and before I froze it. So I'm not gonna wash it. There's no hair or anything in there. I really don't like to uh, add a bunch of water to my meat if I don't have to. So this is the longest part of the process. Now it's gonna get a little easier, kind of funner too. And you can actually start your end process here.